Hi, my name is Stacy Zuber. I am the Soil Health Specialist with the USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service for the state of Illinois. And I am here in Effingham County to talk to you a little bit about soil health checkup and how you can assess the soils in your field for soil health. So one of the things that you can do is look at a rainfall simulator, but usually those are going to be very large, very expensive, and even the tabletop ones that you can buy pre-made are pretty expensive. So I'm going to show you how to make one at home with just some supplies that you may have around the house. Um, make a very cheap version of this. This does a very good job of showing how your soils hold together in rainfall events. So what we have here are just some empty dishes that we have that from kitchen, uh, from that you can buy anywhere and cheap ones of these. These are kind of some of the disposable takeaway dishes that you can buy at the store. What we did with those is we have the top two. We have a shallow dish. This is where the water is gonna go in. Um, and then a deeper dish with this, that's gonna have the soil in it. Both of these have holes on the bottom of them. All right, so we just drilled some holes in here and this is going to allow the water to move through um, and fall, simulating rainfall then the soil is going to be in this dish below it. Um, and so this is gonna have holes underneath it as well to show how much water is actually able to move through the soil and make it out. And then we have another dish below um, this shelf that is um, an open grate on top, shelf to catch all of the rainfall that is able to make it through the soil. So we have these three stacked on top of each other. And we have two sets of these so that we're able to do two different types of soil and compare those. So we're actually gonna go ahead and set these up. And these are soils that are just from the surface of the field. Um, we have a cover crop, long-term cover crop, no-till soil that's here on your left. And this is going to be a conventional tillage field with no cover crop. And how we're going to do this is we're just gonna take our dish that has the holes in it that we have for the soil and we're just gonna take some of this loose soil that we took from the field and we're just gonna put this in to our container. Okay, crumple it up a little bit. You can leave some of the clumps intact. Just putting it in, we just want a couple, about two inches or so of the soil all the way around. All right, and what I like to do with this is because when you have the rainfall, a lot of the time it's gonna go around the edges and it's going to preferentially flow down the outside of the soil and kind of compile there. So I like to tap it down all the way around the outside just a little bit, okay? So this is our cover crop no-till. And we're gonna put our water dish, set that on top. We're gonna to do the same thing over here with our conventional tillage field take a handful of soil, put this in. This is something to consider when you're putting the holes in these, that you wanna make sure that the holes are big enough to allow the water through pretty easily, but not big enough that you have a lot of the soil that's falling through. Okay, so we wanna get that about the same amount of soil in here. And again, just like with the other one, we're gonna go around the outside of it, just tapping down the outside just a tiny bit. Don't have to do a lot, just a little bit. All right. And we have this all set up to go. All right, we're gonna go ahead and run this run rainfall simulator. Um, so we have a cup for each of the two that we're gonna do. Each of these have about two cups worth of water that we're gonna pour in. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do these at the same time. Make sure that you have everything lined up so you have the dishes below that are gonna catch all of the water that is able to infiltrate. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start dumping the water in. I'm gonna pour it a little slowly, but about at the same speed for both of them. We're gonna watch that water that's able to move through. It's a little faster on one than the other, but you can actually already see that our cover crop field that we have on the left is able to move a lot of that water a lot faster than we have the tilled field on the right. So you can see quite a bit of difference there between the two, how quickly they're able to infiltrate the water. So 
you can see over there on the right, there's lots and lots of water that's just standing on top of that soil that's just sitting there, not able to move through. Whereas the vast majority of the water on the left on our cover crop no-till field is able to have made it all the way through and into that container below. Actually try to take these empty dishes off the top so you can see from the top what those two soils look like. Our cover crop no-till there's not any standing water there, but there's a lot of standing water over there on the right. And so both of these, you can kind of imagine in your field, what's happening with those, um, our cover crop field, the water's gonna move in. You're not gonna have runoff. You're not gonna have ponding nearly as much as you do on a tilled field. And that's because of the aggregates within these two. So there's a lot of good aggregates in our cover crop no-till field. And that means that these individual mineral particles are held together, are glued together, whereas our tilled field does not have those good aggregates. So the mineral particles become loose whenever you have those raindrops that hit the soil surface. So they become loose in solution, and then they are gonna plug up any open spaces. Whenever the water tries to move through, they start filling all of those holes and they block it. So now there's not room to go through. And this was even on a loose soil that was completely loose that I put in here. And we see this issue. So this is what's actually happening out in our fields. When you do the tillage and you have that poor aggregation, you're going to have potentially issues with erosion. When you have any kind of slope, all that standing water is going to run off, taking that soil with it, where you have ponding. 